Good day and welcome to the WANA webinar series. Today's event has a few new features we would like to point out before we begin. You can turn on closed captioning by clicking the CC icon on the bottom left of your WebEx screen. You could select the down arrow to then change the language of your closed captioning. Next, we will be using Slido for our polling event today. The link and the passcode can be found within your chat window. And in case you need it, the passcode is BLNO90. We also, uh, we also ask that you complete our survey at the end of the event, which will appear in the Slido as well. As usual, all participants have been muted, but the chat box is open for conversation. If you have a question to ask, please send your question into the Q&A panel located on the bottom right hand side of your screen or by pressing the three dot option along the bottom and selecting the Q&A panel. Your questions will be answered after the presentation. If you have any technical issues, please send a private chat to the host, the directions of which you can find in the chat window. Thank you for joining and please welcome Kinga from Fountain House. Hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, webinar called Stronger Together, the impact of connecting to the international clubhouse movement. Um, it is my pleasure to moderate uh, today's webinar. And we would like uh, this webinar to be a celebration of the power and strength of the global clubhouse movement and hope to start a conversation on how members and staff and individual communities can embrace this powerful feeling that we all had during the World Seminar of being a part of the international movement. It is this experience um, of the, uh, it is this experience of connectedness during the World Seminar that really inspired us to introduce this topic within the WANA webinar series. Uh, we would like to explore how these benefits members in their recovery journey and how this can empower individual clubhouse community uh, communities to strengthen our collective voice in supporting people living with mental illness in all corners of the world. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that the very origin of the WANA series was to come together and provide each other support in these challenging times sending a message of hope and that we are not alone. Uh, this uh, webinar is a celebration of the work done together, uh, the resilience of the clubhouse and all your great contributions. Uh, but before I introduce our live panel today, we would like to share with you a short video of clubhouses around the world expressing their gratitude and saying thank you in different languages to all supporters and as a tribute to the clubhouse movement itself. So let's start with the video. So thank you for this wonderful video. And now we're back with the live panel today. And uh, here with me today is, uh, you, you guys can wave when I call your name, Craig Bayer, member of Fountain House New York, and a great supporter of the international uh, collaboration. Jonah Bogle, member of Clubhouse Pelerin in Olan Island. Michal Galani, representing the Israeli clubhouses, and Jack Yapsko, Chief Operating Officer of Clubhouse International. Welcome, panel. And, and I would like to start with the first question and really ask you, what does it mean to you to be a part of the global movement? And how are we stronger together? And with this question, I, I want to start with Jonah. Yes, thank you, Kinga, for the nice introduction. <clears throat> I, I really honestly don't really know how to start, but I, I will put it in this way. You said it already, the power of and the experience of this connectiveness, which we had on the, in, the, in the World Seminary, it, it had a tremendous effect 
on me as a member and in my recovery as a member, you know, to get this feeling of a, of a, of a bigger picture and a large community. I mean, we are over 320 clubhouses all over the world and the seminary in Lillestrøm, I will never forget it in 2019 when I had this, I could, I still get shivers all over my body when I think about this power, these, these, these testimonials had of all the members and, and all the staff that, that worked with members and so on. And, um, it makes me, it makes me think about, um, a revolution of mental health, actually. That's what it makes me think about. And the standards make me think of a manifesto for this revolution, actually. So this powerful was the the feeling um, and the togetherness in those seminaries and international world. So, and I remember personally, for me, things started to fall into place when I realized the bigger picture of, of my own clubhouse and my own community. And I believe in the power of communities. and. That's why we are stronger together. If we think about, I mean, it's it's the same if I go to my clubhouse in the Oland Islands or if I step into Fountain House in New York, I will I will see the same things, embrace the same language, kind of language, the same kind of of feeling and 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 security and and it's uh, overwhelming actually. Thank you, John. And I think there is something about entering a, a clubhouse building. Like you always know wherever you are in the world, you always know that that's the clubhouse. Greg, did, would you like to add anything to this? Certainly. Uh, yeah, I want to indicate that the people on this call, uh, you know, we're, we're not strangers from strange lands. We're all friends and colleagues. And we're connected by a common language and common ideas. And we connect through various modalities. Uh, we connect through comprehensive clubhouse training. I did that in Britain. And I met uh, there I met the British people. And that was a thrill in my life because I'm an English major. I connected through virtual collaborations with Michal in Israel. I met my, some Jewish brethren. And we discussed clubhouse ideas and issues. And uh, we, I connected with Jonah through the standard study. We, uh, we study the 37 standards of the clubhouse movement. And uh, that was a very meaningful interaction with, you know, Jonah and the Allen Islands. So there's, it's just a small miracle that we can, you know, connect together and, uh, you know, be social. It's a social and educational event whenever we uh, do clubhouse uh, over, the, over, the, over the airwaves and through visits, uh, through travel. So, uh, you know, I, I couldn't be prouder than to be part of this club S movement. Right. Jack, Michal, would you like to? First up, I'd just like to say uh, happy holidays to everybody. Uh, but like Kinga or um, Jonah referenced, I don't know if all of you know that you're part of a global clubhouse international network of over 320 clubhouses in 32 countries. And just as a significant part of recovery in clubhouse um, and belonging to a worldwide movement, great, I think it greatly strengthens that sense of, I'm not alone. Um, you are indeed Clubhouse International. And one document that bonds us all together are the international standards for clubhouse programs. I think that this, um, this movement connects us to a larger world of clubhouses. And just as your clubhouse reduces isolation, so does to be a part of something. Craig mentioned seminars, conferences, trainings, our accreditation process. Our work has great club, global value in meeting the need of, I think, of just human beings in general. No matter where you are in the world, a sense of purpose in your life, a reason to get up in the morning. In clubhouses, everybody's opinion matters and needs to be honored and respected. And our work does this stuff in a really unique and cool way. And I think that um, that creates a stronger movement because we have a more powerful voice together, uh, even with different competing political interests across the globe, talking about global climate change or whatever, where there's differing views. What is occurring in Africa, Pennsylvania and Australia? It, it, it bonds us together and it provides compelling interest from others. I, I agree. It's also create a feeling of one big family not just the movement, not just, it's like we have a family all around the world that speak the same language, 
um, like we have different cultures, different languages, but everywhere in the world you step into a clubhouse, you find the whiteboard, you find the um, culinary unit or the office unit, you know, you know the language. So, and, and I, I think you always get a hug when you come. <laughs> I even sent my mom to, to the Argentinian clubhouses once to see it, and she took a picture of the whiteboard, and we translated to see how similar it is. It's very similar. Um, yes, Michal, and I, I think we're always referencing uh, um, the, the original statement of the clubhouse movement, we are not alone, and this happens really on on the individual level, but also organizational level, like when you think about all the clubhouses that are pretty isolated, being really um, feeling a part of a larger movement and having an access to resources to exchange best practices, to exchange some ideas. This is very powerful. That's how we can uh, advance the clubhouse movement. And uh, with that, I, I want to follow up on all, all those aspects that you mentioned. And uh, I would like to ask you, what can we do daily to strengthen those connections between clubhouses moving into the future? Michal, do you, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I think we can do a lot. Uh, we need to be creative. We need to have the creative thinking about it. Uh, it can be a small step like just keeping in touch with other clubhouses. Um, it can be reading article, which we do here in Israel. We read articles from all around the world that have you have on your website. Uh, we translate them and we study the model throughout the eyes of Australian clubhouse from clubhouse in the United States and all around. Um, one really cool thing that the Jerusalem Clubhouse did, they had the English group that was studying English and they wrote in English uh, cards to all the clubhouses around the world. They got back great response and one of them was from Clubhouse Ithaca in Rome that says, well, you're welcome to, to visit. And, and they actually did. 11 members and staff members um, took the time and whatever it took to, to fly to Rome, to visit the clubhouse, uh, to meet people, members from Rome. It was really um, inspiring um, and great thing to do. We also had um, great uh, learning meetings, Zoom meeting with the Fountain House, um, uh, with Craig, with Cyrus, with all of the good friends in Fountain House. And we exchanged a lot of um, of learning, um, uh, we we put uh, we brought dilemmas and stuff that we issues that we are dealing with. Um, the coronavirus was a great time to feel that you have um, a lot of uh, colleagues around the world and to study from them or to let them study from us how to to better make the connection. Um, so that's just a few things that we can do. I think. I want to try and in on that if if it's possible i would i would like to say that in my clubhouse and with the beginning of covid there was a certain urgency to to um to reach out to other houses as well and through the the learning exchange of fountain house um, um which started in that time in our clubhouse we we started to contact a whole lot of of clubhouses and 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 had these exchanges and we we had travels to plan um, and we had plans to travel there after after covid stops or if it stops and so on it will stop someday but <laughs> um um it's it's a it's a it was covid and the work of clubhouse international um with this one of webinar and and fountain house with this one webinar series i mean there was a certain urgency also to reach out and to make sure all my 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 um my the ones that that I deeply care about, they are okay and they're doing fine, and to exchange back best practices. I mean, it, it got so so dramatically important to do that. Actually, I mean, it was really um, a good time to do that. 
I'd like to also add to that, um, I mean, I could talk about this topic for a long time, but just to mention four or five things, um, go to the Clubhouse International website and look around where all the clubhouses are at. Look at their websites, look at their newsletters, just like we do reach out with members um, at our clubhouses. You can reach out to other clubhouses and find out what cool things they're doing. If you're thinking of a fundraising project, if your social program's getting dull, um, you can find and reach out to other clubhouses. Don't be shy about doing that. Um, speaking of, of uh, at our website, we also have a, if you're looking for employers, looking for good ideas to strengthen your employment program, you download the uh, employment toolkit from our website. Use your portal. Um, I'm not sure all the clubhouses are aware that they now have a portal to use, but you can get great information that other clubhouses are doing in regards to employment. We'll soon have a wellness toolkit up uh, in that regard. Third, if your clubhouse is not, is, is part of our Clubhouse International Coalitions Committee, uh, there's six different committees we're forming with 23 coalitions. Get involved with your coalition because we're going to be sharing best practices with each other globally, and it's a really neat way to be a part of that. Fourth, get involved in research project in your clubhouse if you can. I know sometimes that might feel nefarious or what types of things, but potential place in Canada, for example, just got a really great study published about reducing hospitalizations and cost effectiveness. Look at your outcomes and think about how we can amplify our voice and, and, and really make, send a louder message. I think also just one last concrete thing is you can invite us, invite Clubhouse International to virtually answer your questions in regards to training, accreditation, Clubhouse operations. Our training bases are great resources for that, but don't be shy about reaching out to us. Um, we do this frequently, but if you're not yet aware of it, we'll virtually, we all know how to connect. And so reach out to us. We'll be glad to connect with you to answer your specific questions, no matter where you are uh, in the global Clubhouse community. Thank you, Jack. Get on our newsletter mailing list. That's the last thing I want to say is get on our Clubhouse newsletter mailing list and you'll read all these cool articles about the Island Islands, about uh, the, uh, all the Clubhouses around the world. Yeah, I wanted to add that uh, in order to establish these connections, just do more of the same, more virtual collaborations, more standard studies. Uh, we created a New Yorker style literary journal, an international journal for the Clubhouse community here at Fountain House. So there are many ways to connect and uh, increase the connection between the communities. Thank you for all the examples and uh, uh, thank you, Jack, for uh, uh, listing some of the things that clubhouses can do. I think it's, it's really uh, a community building uh, uh, moment. Uh, the same what we do in each individual clubhouse, but on a more... Uh, uh, on a larger scale and I think that you know during COVID we all realized uh, one more uh, I mean once again that we are really like united under the same mission and vision and and uh, realized that during the pandemic we, we can really help each other through the guidelines, through best practices, through uh, some of the things that clubhouses were working on. And this very program, the WANA webinar, was supposed to uh, provide a platform for, for those different voices and, and share some of the experience and support other clubhouses. I think that's a wonderful message. Um, and, and I would like to follow up on this and, and ask you uh, how we can leverage clubhouses to have a greater impact in the mental health landscape of the changing world. Jack, would you like to take this question? Sure, and again, um, list four or five things. One, use your members' stories, use the media. Not enough clubhouses think of the broader community. If we wanna have a greater impact in the mental health landscape, we need to, to share what we're doing. We have great member stories to share. We have outcomes we need to share. So I think contacting your, your local media and making people aware of those stories reduces stigma, leverages the clubhouse to be more respected in the community. Use your advisory, no, second thing, use your boards or advisory boards, your various political connections to raise more awareness. 
we should no longer be the best kept secret in mental health. And that's another way to increase our leverage. Use some of the, a third thing is I, I printed out, use some of the things that we've had published to leverage your own clubhouse when you're writing for grants, when you're trying to um, raise more funds for your community. We had, and uh, the Lancet Commission on Global Mental Health has published stuff, it's good things about Clubhouse. The World Health Organization has published good things about Clubhouse. The American Psychiatric Association awarded us um, with a, a, lar a large award earlier this year. If you're not aware of those things, reach out to us. We can give them, you guys, those as tools to use to leverage mental health landscape of this changing world and make yourself a larger player. Fourth, use your accreditation reports. Uh, in Norway, Michigan, Indiana, Finland, these are just four examples, Sweden, of using those reports to leverage and publicize the good work and the outcomes of the clubhouse. And I think also lastly on this topic, leverage your own clubhouse wherever it's at. We have a vision that there should be a clubhouse in every community. And I was just on the phone the other day with a member from Pennsylvania who said There's a, there really should be a clubhouse in the community next to mine. Use your own clubhouse example and reach out to us to get tools to help start more clubhouses. We should have a clubhouse in every community around the globe, and we can't be shy about our work. We have to tell it loudly and proudly, and we can't be embarrassed to ask for dollars. We need to speak from a place of our members have been marginalized for far too long, and we can have a real impact in the world if given a chance. All you guys are Clubhouse International, and we can leverage the mental health landscape if we continue to work collectively together. Yeah, I'd like to add that uh, Fountain House itself, uh, it's part of its strategic plan to uh, increase awareness about Clubhouse. It's been reaching out aggressively, not only to various clubhouses, but to uh, people in the mental, general mental health community. We're very aggressive on Facebook. We're very aggressive in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the media. And, uh, you know, it's, I think it's becoming very effective now where Clubhouse is well on its way to making a name for itself. I wanted to chime in on the, on the topic of, of, of speaking proudly about the work of your own Clubhouse community and about the international clubhouse movement. I mean, we, and I agree, Jack, we cannot be shy about our work. We, we, we've been marginalized in, in years and we didn't have a voice for ourselves or for others. And we were, we were given a voice and now we have to use it. It's almost our duty. And I, I often, I often um, compare it with um, this becoming pride movement, you know, when these expressions, which were originally negatively connotated, like, now it comes queer to my mind, for example, which you use as a as a as an expression of pride in the end. You know, this is why it, it makes me almost. I mean, to be part of this movement and the, the the pride I have for this movement, it makes me almost want to shout out, "Yeah, I am an art case, and I'm proud of it." You know, and yes, I have a voice, and I have something to say, and I have a life to live, and it's 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 worth living. You know, it's it's not. I'm not only sick. I'm not only a nut case. I'm I'm so many things, and I, I mean, the work of Clubhouse International and the work of my own community made me um, um, dramatically aware of that, and this is, uh, is, is very powerful to use that tool of, 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 of pride and um, blow it out in the world. We are here. Exactly. And, and John, instead of feeling lonely and ashamed, we feel proud and, and we are a part of a huge organization, a global organization. It's, it's a, um, the, exactly the opposite of how we, we probably felt before. Yes. Yes, and I, I think we're going back to this excitement we always have when we realize this uh, the, the strength of this movement, because I think it's uh, in our daily work, we uh, kind of like forget about having the 300 uh, clubhouses out there. And I think the, the, the word seminar is really an experience when you really feel it. And, and I, I think what uh, we're trying to start with this conversation is how to keep this momentum going and, and how to keep this excitement. and 
and uh, really uh, take the ownership of some projects, as Jack was pointing out, of uh, reaching out, looking for the information, connecting on uh, different issues. I think that's such a uh, empowering uh, message. And uh, Katie, yeah, I'd um, like to add to that. Just yeah. um, speaking of the world seminar, um, if you if you're not aware yet, we're going to be meeting in Baltimore, Maryland, September 17th to, to the 22nd later this year. And we're uh, fingers crossed with all the stuff of the pandemic, but we miss everybody. And and this virtual way is a way for us to, to connect in a way that we've never probably wouldn't have done as fast as we did with the pandemic, but we're hoping to provide uh, both a combination of a, a virtual and uh, in person. Um, there's nothing like being in person at these seminars when you're having lunch with people from the Aland Islands, New York, Israel. I'm in Hawaii. I um, mean, you meet people from all over the world and you're talking, talking shop with them about anything. So this mark on your calendars, Baltimore, Maryland, World's Clubhouse International World Seminar, September 17th to the 22nd. Great. Any other thoughts from the panel, Craig? Yes, uh, I think uh, just in my summation of this is that, you know, the, the clubhouse movement has definitely combated isolation, not only for the individual members, but for the clubhouses themselves. Uh, it's contributed to the personal growth of members, the education and travel that we have as a result of the clubhouse movement. It's been very uh, a, per a personal growth process for me. And, you know, to be blunt about it, it brings joy to your life to uh, be part of something like this, to, to uh, connect with the world and, uh, and you know, study other cultures and other, other uh, modes of using the clubhouse because, you know, we have similarities, but we also have differences around the world and they're always fascinating. So, you know, I think this, this uh, international connection has uh, greatly benefited everybody. Yes, and I'm looking at the chat, and, and uh, we would like to hear from you as well. I mean, what are your thoughts, experience? And uh, I think our chat is open, so please share with us and uh, post your questions. We have a wonderful panel today, and we'll, we'll do our best to uh, answer your question. So um, before we uh, go to questions, I, I want to ask you about some final thoughts about uh, thoughts and comments about this topic and being a part of the global movement. Words of wisdom from our panel. Mm -hmm. Michal? Yeah, I don't have any words of wisdom, but I, <laughs> I really think that um, my thoughts during this conversation is that we here in Israel, we should do more to connect more members to the global feeling, to the, um, of course, it's so empowering and, and it's so um, different to feel that you're some, you're part of a very, very large, bigger thing. Uh, I think we should do more and uh, we'll try to do more this year to connect more members um, to other clubhouses around the world. One thing that I was thinking too, just at a real concrete level, all of us have our our unit work unit meetings on our on our boards. We go through who's answering phones and who's helping make lunch. Add to your unit list like this kind of thing, like who's going to check websites today or who's going to look at um, some other clubhouses and and see ideas. Like we're, we're always talking about what should we do next or what are some new menus or what should we be doing? Um, we have an advocacy campaign coming up. That stuff is out there. So I think making that a part of our daily unit work um, and, and looking at other clubhouses uh, could really help expand that. And, and, and like you said, Kinga, we just tend to get caught up in our day to day uh, wherever we're at. But there is there's this large, exciting world out there. And there's really good, successful advocacy, fundraising, startup stories um, that are out there. It's 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 within our grasp. And I think we just need we need to do a better job of it collectively. Um, it's exciting to be a part of this this group this morning. But I think that's a concrete way to do that, as well as leveraging um, the movement with we don't have to reinvent a lot of this stuff. We're good at a lot of different things. Your clubhouse may be good at one thing. Another clubhouse may be good at another. Let's share these ideas and let's grow co 
together collectively by communicating further with each other on those. Yeah, I can, I can share some words of wisdom. I would uh, share the words of Dr. Alan Doyle, who was a uh, director of comprehensive training here uh, not too long ago. And he said to us in one training session, each member is a gem. And that's exactly how a member feels to be part of an international movement in which his recovery matters, in which his recovery is believed in and encouraged. And I think that's, uh, that, that would be my parting comment. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can chime in on that, actually, because um, I feel as well, I feel the, really the urgency of the movement and that this is something so passionate, I can stay wholehearted behind it because people, let's change up some things in this world, you know, let's, let's do this together and let's, we are, we are strong together. We can, we can change the world of mental health and we did already a lot of things and, uh, And and plus, um, by engaging in the international world, you know, I became so much better and aware of myself and of my abilities and capabilities. So this is really something really big and important and inspiring and exciting in, in on every level, I think. Wonderful. And uh, uh, please post your questions. And I just want to ask Nikki if we if we have any questions so far. Also, I just want to let everyone know that if you raise your hand and let us know, we can unmute you and you can share your thoughts and comments in a live webinar. Perfect. Thank you, Kinga. So sorry. I was double muted. I was talking that whole time. <laughs> so for anyone who has a question, Feel free to put it in the Q&A chat, the regular chat, as Kinga said, if you want to ask live or have a topic you'd like to talk about, raise your hand. So for our first question for today, how can we support clubhouses in regions that are not generally connected with the movement, such as India, Africa, China, Japan, Korea, or Australia? Well, that's such a good question. Jack, would you like, us, would you like to start us off? Sure. Um, thanks for that great question. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, just yesterday, um, our executive director, Joel Corkin, and I met with the, they call it the JCC, the Japanese Clubhouse Coalition. And we met with all of their clubhouses to hear about the standards review process, uh, to talk about upcoming training opportunities, uh, and also to um, address some of the challenges that, that those clubhouses are, are facing. Um, that all of those clubhouses um, had an opportunity to share with us what's working, what's not, what, what sorts of things that they're looking for to grow. And we were able to connect them up with some other clubhouses to give them some supports. I think that places like India, Africa, we, we have startup groups, Kinga, Cyrus, and, and I have worked uh, with some African startup groups in Ghana, Nairobi, Kenya. Um, they're hungry and they want to um, be a part of this movement. Uh, they, in their time zone, they got up early in the morning to come to the Virtual World Seminar. I think that um, those of you who are interested in learning more about what their challenges are and what ways you can support them, even sharing your newsletter, sharing um, how you guys get started is, is helpful to these groups who have bare bones budgets. Um, Helping them with leveraging government funding is huge. And we, we try to share that in our conversations with um, countries that have a hard time getting clubhouses started. But for those of you out there who get government funding for your clubhouses and have leveraged that successfully, we'd love to share your success stories as well with places that um, are really developing clubhouses in, in really difficult circumstances in Africa, India, uh, in, in other areas. We're, we're very scratching the surface, you guys. We need to get in Central America. We need to get all over uh, the globe and be um, in many, many more countries. Great, Jack. And I think, you know, the digital platform and, and the usage of video conferencing can be very helpful. Like we uh, haven't been, been utilizing this uh, on this scale before the pandemic but now i think uh with you know opening this to a larger group even through events like the word seminar right because i i think uh a lot of people uh were able to join just because it was virtually and they include travel we can 
really start this conversation and exchange information. Do you guys have yeah, there, any other thoughts? Was, well, yeah. just one other quick example was in Nairobi, this guy walked around with his phone and showed us this land that they had to potentially start a clubhouse. And he was showing us, you know, what they had and what they were thinking about. And he just had his phone and he walked around this village and showed us where the train station was. So it was kind of close to where they could possibly build a clubhouse. Um, Cause we were asking about how members would be able to come to the place if they were to build, you know, on this land that they had. And so we, those digital opportunities are available to, to mostly everybody and clubhouses have also done a great job getting phones into members' hands and tablets and things of that nature. So that just, you know, was a way this guy just walked around and showed us and we could say, well, what about this? And what about that? And who should we approach to um, get these kinds of resources? So those conversations happen regularly. And we, we want to hear from you where you know of a place that needs a clubhouse and how we can work together. Yeah, I think it's important to uh, encourage the clubhouses and friends of clubhouses, encourage mental health officials all over the world, public public uh, officials, and of course corporations to invest in clubhouse. I, I, it's it's very uh, difficult to make that happen, but it's something that needs to happen if we want to have an impact on the world. I I have a crazy dream. <laughs> Um, to take uh, to find someone who wants to do a um, doco, um, a documentary movie, and to send him to 320 clubhouses around the world, and to see how how it uh, operates in different countries. I think maybe if one day we could do that, it can have a lot of impact. Um, also on on the stuff you you were talking about, Craig, but. Uh, also the general feeling of this global movement. Great. Greg's point too about not um, uh, the government officials piece of this. Um, we cannot be shy and operate in silos, like meaning just we get private funding for our clubhouse from this one entity. Uh, you really are at, at risk if that entity dries up. And and that's where we talk about the outcomes and the stories to approach government officials to support our work. Our work is effective from a cost-effective piece to the stories that, that, that Jonah was sharing earlier and that we all have with members in our own clubhouses. So again, the messaging of putting together sharp materials to approach your government officials um, to augment your fundraising efforts is gonna strengthen your, not only your clubhouse, but our network across the globe. The more people are aware of it and see it as um, helping people to, uh, helping change the world. I, I visited probably by, 170 clubhouses right now. And I run into so many members who say, this clubhouse not only changed my life, it, it saved my life. And, and we take those words very seriously at all of our training bases at Clubhouse International and the work that we do in accreditation with our advisory council. And that needs to be um, shared at, at a larger level and not be afraid to approach those powers that be um, who, wherever they are in, in your local community. Wonderful. Nikki, do we have any other question from the audience? I do. We, we, can, we can unmute you and you can share it in a live webinar. We would really appreciate it. I think that's a... We did have a question uh, that we were able to answer in chat, but just so everyone is aware, uh, can a copy of the Canadian study that shows how the clubhouse model reduces hospitali hospitalization be sent to us? Um, and we will be sending that out so that can be available. Right. Our, our next question, if there, are, if there are individuals that would like to have a clubhouse community in their area, what might they do to start this? Right question. You can email me at jyatsko at clubhouse-intl.org. I'll put it in the chat. Um, we have a startup toolkit um, that has a lot of um, – real concrete pieces of advice with forming a, a, a working group to start up a clubhouse. We, we have a lot of great resources. We run a new clubhouse development training that's designed for the infrastructure. So while Fountain House and our other 11 training bases teach the operations, 
the work order day, transitional employment, all the components to make an effective, strong clubhouse. Before you get the clubhouse, how do you get the money to start the clubhouse? How do you find the board? How do you find what sort of square footage and things like that do you look for in a clubhouse? Um, we have great, really smart people in all these coalitions across the globe, too, that have done this effectively. And so between the coalitions, um, best practices and with um, reaching out to you can reach out to me and I'd be glad to have a conversation and send you a toolkit. Um, just last week, I met with a group from Louisiana, um, a peer peer support group that wants to get a clubhouse started. And there was five people talking to what, what I was talking to about what do you have now? What's lacking? Who are you talking to? Who do you know? Um, and that's where the conversation starts. We, we get so many emails and calls, usually from a family member who says, my son or daughter was doing great in high school and then went to college and things started to fall apart for them. And, and now they're in our basement playing video games. And we heard about this clubhouse model, but we don't we don't have experience with writing grants or talking to government officials. How do we get one of these in our community? That's where the conversation starts every day. And people like Craig and Jonah and Michal, Kinga and myself, um, we're, we're more than willing to help in that regard. And we have tools to help you with that. So if there's a community that you're, that you're aware of um, that you, you want to help start a clubhouse, reach out to us and we, we can help. We can provide concrete help in that regard. That's great. We actually have someone on who is um, located in West Africa and will be visiting in March to explore the opportunities and um, hoping to get in touch with Clubhouse International. So she, they did say that they will be reaching out to you, Jack, when they get back. <laughs> yes, I highly, encourage, I highly encourage people to visit the clubhouses. Uh, if you want to start a clubhouse, visit it yourself. Bring uh, investors and other uh, powerful people to the clubhouse. It's a unique experience to, be, to, to actually be here and observe what happens at the clubhouse. That's such a good point, Craig, I, I think. Uh, it really anyone... is, Craig, because educating yeah. yourself about what a clubhouse is and does is first and foremost. So when you talk about, I want one of these in my community, you got to really understand what one is. And the best way to do that, as Craig says, is if you can, now in West Africa, where am I going to go to step into a clubhouse? So the next best thing, if you can't go and visit one, is to go look at videos of clubhouses from our website, from others. If you Google mental health clubhouse, you'll see about 18 to 20 different videos of clubhouses. Um, the resources that we can give you can help educate you about a clubhouse too, but it's very important to be talking consistently the same language, using the international standards, using some of the articles that define what a clubhouse is, because you'll find so many people like to call themselves clubhouses. And that can be a different thing in different places, but our standards provide a framework and our training basis and accreditation process really is a way to, to help define what a clubhouse is. So educating yourself first and foremost about what a clubhouse is and does is step one. And, it, and so visiting a clubhouse or uh, watching videos, reading articles, talking to people who already are in uh, accredited clubhouses are steps along the way. And then it can be really a, a, a beginning of the relationship building because I'm thinking about uh, really supporting in all those different situations, socioeconomic situations and so on. And I think there are differences across the world. I'm sure, Jack, you, you will uh, confirm this. And sometimes, uh, you know, sharing what's out there is one, visiting clubhouses, that's, that's a really good uh, um that's a good a very, a really good recommendation but also at one point like starting finding your mentor among clubhouses and perhaps uh having this clubhouse that you can start conversations and really address all the things that come up in the process i think that's very helpful because again we're not alone and uh, uh there are situations when we can advance our work just through learning from others, right? How they did it, especially if there's a. a I heard somebody situation. say one. I heard somebody say one time in our work, plagiarism is a form of flattery, <laughs> and meaning like, look, man, Craig's written something. Get it from Craig and use it. 
Um, and, and, and similarly, uh, across, if somebody's looking for a van and you're in a rural community and you just really struggle, there's no public transportation, there are lots of clubhouses who've written grants to obtain vans to help get members to and from the clubhouse. And clubhouses are more than willing to share those. Um, uh, and in our, you mentioned mentoring, um, can get in our new clubhouse development training. It's not just a training you come to for a couple of days. Um, you do develop an action plan, but you're assigned a mentor, somebody who's going to work with you for a year or longer to help achieve your goals and objectives that you develop an action plan in that training. So they're meeting with you regularly. They're reaching out to other people and saying, you know, Hey, Jonah, you said something one time at a conference. Can I get that speech? I, I, I would like to share that story with somebody that I'm talking to about the clubhouse. We cobble that together and, and help these new startup groups in that way. And these mentors are experienced clubhouse people, members and staff who do this freely um, to uh, help clubhouses get off the ground. So you're, you're not left alone. And similarly in training, when a clubhouse goes to training, the training base is there for the long haul. It isn't one and done they follow up with post site business they follow up with video conferencing um they're really invested in helping a clubhouse achieve its goals and um and they're located across the globe and i think there's something unique about this approach because uh, jackie mentioned several times that you know clubhouses are willing to share their knowledge and expertise they 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 really are supportive and helpful. And I think what people need to understand is really like a community. So we help each other. And why do we want to help? Because knowing this model, we know that it should be everywhere. It should be accessible to people in, in different parts of the world, no matter where they live. So it's sort of a, this, this intention of, of uh, sharing this model with uh, everyone with when it, uh, where it's needed and basically it's needed everywhere. I think that's something Kinga, that always comes up when we we do plan uh, plan the new year, and members always say we have to open more clubhouses around Israel because it's uh, it's so good it's working it really is. Um, a great model and we want more and more people to know that they are not alone. Um, and I agree with Craig that there is nothing like visiting a clubhouse. When you visit a clubhouse, you really understand this is how we work. We, we, we walk our talk and we don't just talk it. We, we, all, we really do that, this partnership, this um, working together and shared decision making, all of that is really, really working. Um, and I think today, if you can't come for a visit, you can do a virtual visit and, and that's. You have to see a clubhouse, you have to meet a clubhouse if you want to start 1. Wonderful. Right, fine. All right, we do have a comment from Spirit Crossing Clubhouse in Fort Collins. Uh, appreciated the opportunity to hear new perspectives from across the world. Thanks for including us. Our next question, I have heard that the clubhouse movement is the largest, largest agent of rehabilitation for people with mental health problems. Does anyone know the source of this statement? Okay. Anyone on the panel? Anyone in the audience? Do not. I, I certainly agree that, with the statement. <laughs> I don't know where the statement came from, but the fact is, is that, you know, this, it's been established that the clubhouse is an evidence based, uh. Model for recovery and that it's an award winning. Uh, model, uh, the Hilton prize uh, was awarded to us some time ago. For the work, all the clubhouses have done around the world. So, uh, the, you know, the, the evidence is there that we've accomplished something where the statement comes from. I couldn't tell you that. Maybe that's a question to the audience as well, and uh, we can have a giveaway here if someone uh, knows the answer to this question. Uh, you can win a prize. <laughs> <laughs> I'll certainly watch the chat. If it comes up, I'll let you all know. Oh, let it be the uh, Fontenot's book. How about that? <laughs> you know the answer to this question. Uh, write to one a webinar at fontenhouse.org and you might win a prize. <laughs> All right, our next question. Um, so this is someone who's new 
So this may be happening already, but are we using organized breakout rooms across the movement to intentionally connect clubhouses around the world? Perhaps on themes and on a regular basis to promote relationship building. Okay. Jack, would you, would you like to take this one on? I think that happens at several levels. Um, that happens at a clubhouse level um, and a coalition level uh, with breakout rooms and reaching out to people. We do that a bit with Clubhouse International with um, if we're, with some of the trainings that we do and also with um, if you've come to our seminars and conferences, we frequently um, do that. The, um, uh, so the answer is yes, but it happens at a variety of levels from um, uh, clubhouse is doing that themselves with some of their social programs with breakout rooms and activities that they do. Um, we've done it with um, uh, some of the activities with Clubhouse International, some of the trainings that we do with our new Clubhouse development and our seminar. And I know our coalitions do that as well um, in hosting events. And so, you know, it, whoever's asked the question, I mean, we've all experienced the pandemic and we all, you know, have that sort of collective like, ah, you know, a, a new variant. Now what? <laughs> but I really feel like um, there's no way we'd be as advanced as we are with our technology right now um, if the pandemic hadn't hadn't occurred. It really forced our hand in a way that we talked about, but we didn't take action with. And so um, using WebEx, using Zoom, using Teams, all those kinds of things have really helped us. And I think it's really helped reduce the isolation that we talked about at the beginning of, of this webinar, uh, where so many members um, are alone and then the pandemic hits and it exacerbates the very thing that, um, you know, really impacts members on so many levels. So Clubhouse is reaching out immediately, getting supports, um, both from a technology end and, and also even like Journey House and many other clubhouses across the world, delivering meals, delivering um, medications, <laughs> um, still having, you know, that sort of contact, but using um, our resources to reach out digitally in this virtual world, um, I think made people less afraid of it. Um, and more in tune with it. And I think going forward, many club buses are gonna combine these hybrid components. And so a member who has to take four buses and transfers to get to their clubhouse and was doing that five days a week, but now connects up this way, might come three days a week and two days a week, they're getting on the unit meeting and still reaching out to members from home, writing articles for the newsletter. Um, Club buses are getting really good at this stuff, and we're going to continue to share those best practices as we expand our, you know, we can expand and reach more members using these kinds of tools. And breakout rooms are one of them. Right. All right. Well, on that topic of the pandemic. How do we support building new member leadership in the clubhouse? After the pandemic, I am noticing that we have a whole new wave of individuals joining who might understand the potential for leadership as a member. I think that's a great question and I, I really relate to. We have a lot of new members and new staff members that joined the clubhouse through the pandemic. And it's a totally different clubhouse and they don't know and haven't been in a real vibrant clubhouse um, as we did before. Um, and we see it in a lot of the uh, engagement of members to, to become leaders uh, at their communities. Um, it's, I, I think it's a bit more difficult and we, we need to renew the connection, renew the, um, standard education and and bring back um, a lot of the things we had before the pandemic. Uh, so I really feel that it's one of the challenges just this year for us. And one of the great things we do is uh, the accreditation pro progress um, that really connects people to to this part and to be, be more of the leaders and more um, connected to the model, to this special model. I think a lot of members are natural leaders, but I will say that the clubhouse uh, encourages leadership by having members involved in every aspect of the operation, 
including governance of the clubhouse. Uh, we, we take part in, in meetings that determine who gets hired and how, and how we're, how we're going to administer policies of the clubhouse, create and administer policies. So there's plenty of opportunities within a clubhouse for members to take leadership roles. Yes, I'm happy you pointed that out, Jack, because, uh, um, um, Greg, because that's exactly what I, um, what I think is important here. It's actually the, the clubhouse who encourages. And if you work as a standard based clubhouse, you encourage all your member to be part of all the operations of the clubhouse. That means you are, you are always, you're always welcome in the director's office as well, or, um, in the hiring process, as you mentioned and so on. And then it's also, um. I think it has to do also with the training and the awareness of the clubhouse model and how it is built and how how its historical um, element is 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 woven into the standards. You mean you know it started with these six patients at the at the New York Library steps in 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 nineteen forties and then one in the nineteen fourteens, which met each other to support each other. And there was no stuff. There was no stuff involved at this time when they founded this one society. So, I mean, clubhouses are made for members and we have to be also take the step to, 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 um, and we, we have to be encouraged to, um, to take leadership on, on onto our, um, selves, you know. One other area of leadership that, um, we're going to be conducting another faculty training where members and staff are part of our faculty that do accreditation visits. And so if you have uh, members at, at, or staff at your clubhouse that you feel um, would be good candidates for our faculty to do accreditation visits, um, Joan is on our, our faculty um, and our, when we do accreditation visits, a member staff team. So if you have people that you think could be um, good, uh, that's another leadership opportunity. I also think on another Go, go in the pendulum of um, just some other fun sorts of things. Um, I think leadership opportunities using this mechanism with um, our social programs and talent shows um, to bring members um, out, whether they're, I, I remember Putnam Clubhouse in California did this really cool talent show and they invited other clubhouses and members were reading poetry, performing music, um, doing all kinds, doing comedy bits. Um, and so the, this was an opportunity for a member that took on a real leadership role at their clubhouse to email other clubhouses and call them to see if they had people to do this. And then other members at other clubhouses had an opportunity to shine and show their talent, skills, and abilities in a different way. Uh, and so that's kind of a cool, another way to use um, our, our virtual capacity with each other as clubhouses. But I think also uh, going back to our model, uh, it, it's since it's a community and, and it's open to any new members, I think members, when they come to the clubhouse, they realize very early on that they have a voice and an impact and they create, uh, co-create this community. And I think we start with simple questions at the very beginning, like which un unit do you, uh, do you want to join? Who do you want to work with? There are a lot of, uh, it, it's really this uh, involvement and, and empowerment is from the very beginning. And I, I think uh, it's, uh, uh, John, I'm sure you speak about it very often, but it's a very powerful feeling when you feel like uh, it really, it is your decision navigating uh, your journey at the clubhouse and you have an impact on how it looks, right? Yes, this is very important. I mean, I'm very happy you pointed that out because I mean, it starts actually with, because one is, might be really in a, in a, in a bad position while showing up at the steps of a clubhouse, but it starts with that, with, with the, the looking, I read in one article, you look in somebody's eyes and you say, Hey, we truly need you here. Or, um, would you like to, to help? Or would you like to join the meeting? In my case, it was like, I thought this was a daycare center when I stepped into my clubhouse first because I never heard of clubhouse um, before. So I was, I was asked, I was first, I was telling about my diagnosis and what my challenges are and what I can't do and so on. And I, I remember how I was, um, how I was guided by the, by the, by the, by the staff and, and said, like, sit down, have a coffee, and then we have a morning meeting and then you, then we can, we can look what we can do. And it, it's nice that you are here and you truly need it. And I was like, 
this was the first moment where I really realized this is something else, you know, and this it it lies within the standards and without the his within the history of of the of the movement that that this little aspect of of being encouraged is leading to to a bigger leadership to a to a bigger to to a recovery and to you said navigate through your own recovery. I would say it's a way to navigate through your through your uh, whole life again. It's a way to to become to to get to the point from a patient with a lot of problems to a, to simply a human being again with potential with 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 hopes with a with a life worth living and that's the magic that happens in a clubhouse that's such a powerful message Jonah. and i think we we are running out of time and uh, uh nikki do we have any other questions no more questions for today kinga Great. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, thank you, panel. And uh, it, we we would like to hear from you. So uh, please write to one webinar at fontanals.org with your ideas for future events. And we'll see you next year. I want to wish everyone happy holidays. Wonderful. Please take a moment to complete the survey link located in the chat window. If we have not answered your question, please send an email to wanawebinar at fountainhouse.org. The recording and transcript for this event will be made available next week. Thank you for coming to the webinar. Please be on the lookout for announcements regarding our future webinars. Have a great day.